So, Ellie, I'll ask you why you're at a football ground in a, in a minute, but um, the, uh, if you were sitting, if this, imagine this is Britain's Got Talent and you're beside Simon Cowell there, whatever, on a judging panel and Boris is in front of you, uh, what would your critique be of how he performed? Well, I think with Boris yesterday, it was the same old bluster. He seems to be in denial, and I don't think people will be very impressed with his performance yesterday. Actually, I think it's insulting to people up and down the country who stuck to the rules, the rules that Boris Johnson made, and he tries to uh, convince us that he didn't realise that he was breaking the rules. He didn't know what the rules were. I just don't think it uh, will wash. You know, people didn't get the chance to say goodbye to their loved ones. Grandparents didn't see grandchildren. Women had to give birth without their partners. There are stories from up and down the country of the personal sacrifices people uh, made. And I don't think that they will be impressed with Boris Johnson's performance yesterday. Even Conservative voters, according to YouGov polls, 51% uh, believe him to be dishonest. Uh, interesting that the Conservative peer and pollster this morning saying, look, a few weeks ago, Labour were virtually measuring the curtains in Downing Street, thinking electoral success next year was a certainty, but it's all to play for now. Look, you know, we're doing well in the polls, but there's certainly no complacency uh, about the next election. Our job is to put forward an alternative uh, to the Conservative government. And I think after 13 years of Conservative government, people will be asking themselves, are we any better off? And I think most people's answer to that will be, no, we're not. People don't feel better off under the Conservatives. Their mortgages have uh, gone up. Crime has gone up up. Uh, people are not able to get GP appointments or uh, have ambulances arrive when they need them. So I don't think people feel better off under this Conservative government. Yeah. You will also remember that when Conservatives came in, there was no money left under Labour. And I think pretty much everybody can see that whilst that administration has been in power, they've had to deal with a huge number of challenges, whether it be a pandemic or a war uh, or indeed trying to navigate Brexit as well. But you look at the choices that this government has made. Working people are facing the highest tax burden for 70 years. We saw in the budget last week that rather than helping working families, the only tax cut that there was was for the richest 1% and their pension pots. There are choices that governments can make. And this Conservative government proves time and time again that they're not on the side of working uh, people. And I think that's pretty clear for people up and down the country. Uh, now, talking about up and down the country, well, I'm, I'm taking it that's Port Vale that you're at. There's a big clue behind you. Uh, why, why are you at Port Vale Football Club? Robbie Williams Club, incidentally. Well... Well, we're at Port Vale Football Club today because Keir Starmer is launching Labour's crime uh, mission. And Port Vale Football Club is really at the heart of the community here in Stoke. They do a huge amount of work within the local community. So we thought, what better place to launch that crime mission than in the heart of the local community here? Why is crime, um, you know, it should be everybody's cause, but it's particularly a Labour cause. And we were reflecting on the programme yesterday, how Labour has cleverly and subtly uh, begun to own the, the label of law and order. Well, because after 13 years of Conservative government, people don't feel safe on their streets. Crime is up. Uh, only uh, just over one in a 100 uh, reported rapes result in uh, a charge. Uh, and people think that, you know, where are the police on the, the streets? And it's such an important issue. Crime blights communities. And after these 13 years of Conservative government, people don't feel safe. And that's why it's such an important uh, issue for people uh, that we, that we speak to. As a history, we're working in the sector, uh, Sir Keir Starmer, having been director of uh, public prosecutions, and he knows the system inside and out. How are Labour going to cut violence against women in half, though? That's a huge ambition. 
Well, well, it is, but violence against women and girls is, a, uh, uh, is epidemic in society and we need real change. And Labour have set out uh, a number of measures that, that we would implement to end violence against women and girls. For example, minimum sentences for rapists, uh, introducing a minimum sentence of seven uh, years, um, setting up specialist rape courts so that we can fast track these cases through the system. At the moment, victims are waiting three years for their cases to get to court, which means that criminals aren't behind uh, bars uh, and victims feel as though they're being uh, let down. We would also put uh, domestic abuse call handlers in police control rooms and make sure that there are specialist rape and serious sexual violence uh, units within every police force. And those are measures that we could implement to uh, tackle violence against women and girls and bring those figures down. We were also talking in the papers this morning about how Labour want to bring in police outside the school gates to try and prevent a gang crime. A lot of parents will sort of balk at that idea. Well, we've talked about hotspot policing to make sure that we are tackling the areas where we know that crime is taking place. And if that's drug dealing uh, outside of schools or if it's where we know that young people are uh, getting exploited and being drawn into criminal gangs, then I think parents will feel reassured uh, by that. But we also want to put 13,000 more uh, community police officers on the beat. People uh, don't see police on the streets anymore and we want to reverse that and we think that will bring down those crime levels as well and also that antisocial behaviour that blights communities.